Hey guys, it's Eleanor from the Nerd Element again, bringing you coverage from Phoenix Comic Con this weekend. Right now, we are with Mike Cole, author of the Shadow Ops series. Thank you so much for being with us and talking with us today. Thanks for having me. Um, so I guess let's start out with uh, what inspired you to start writing? Oh wow, uh, I think I, I think it was the sort of the thing I was good at. My my mother incorrectly uh, raised me believing that everybody in my family was bad at math and science, and that there was no point in even worrying about those things. The irony of this is I later on uh, wound up working in computer engineering, so I'm actually fairly good at it. Uh, but when you grow up reading every second of every day, um, then tech sort of becomes your way of being in the world. I also was a big D and D player. And what's the indie? It's text. It's, it's stories that you're acting out and telling in real time. But your whole medium of encountering the world, of understanding the rules of the world, is text, text, text. And I don't think it was a huge leap for me uh, to go from reading this stuff to, to writing. How, how did you come up with the concept for Shadow Ops? Uh, I was working in the Pentagon. And the thing I became really interested in is that the military has a rule for absolutely everything. And this can be really, really boring and, and really, really um, oppressive at times. But it's also really, really necessary because you can't wield the power of deadly force and have it be subject to personal whims and idiosyncrasies. You have got to have it be reliable, repeatable. The average member of the public has to know that we're only going to kill when there's a reason to and when it's in service to the nation. Well, there's a rule for everything. There's a rule for how to brush your teeth. I'll give you an example. If I'm going to sneeze, and there's an actual authorized military sneeze, which is into the crook of your elbow, away from the person near you, three feet social distance. I'm not exaggerating. And any other way is not authorized. So while I was walking around, I was thinking, man, they have a rule for everything. And when you're a nerd, what do you think? Well, what if there was magic? What if there were elves? Uh, what would the rules be for them? And, uh, and how would that shake out? And that was the kernel of the, of the Shadow Ops idea. So is there a character in the Shadow Ops series that you really connect with that you kind of maybe base some of the personality off of your own? Wow, yes. Um, and it's funny, uh, it's my most flawed character, Oscar Britton. Uh, he, when I wrote Oscar Britton, it's one of the biggest complaints about the first novel, Control Point, but it's also the biggest compliment I get. I got really, really frustrated by the idea that the people assume that you're in the military. You must be sure of everything. You must be confident all the time, and every decision you make is a good one. No, people in the military are like people anywhere else. And, you know, I have fumbled my way to what success in life I've had. I do a lot of flailing, I make a lot of mistakes, and I really, really wanted to show a character that does the same thing, that makes huge, exaggerated uh, errors, and that slowly weaves their way through a very, very circuitous course to a, to a good end. Uh, you know, are there any authors that kind of inspired you while you were writing? Oh my god, a ton of them. I mean, the most obvious one is Peter V. Brett, whose Demon Cycle, the three books out now, are The Warded Man, The, uh, the Painted Man in the UK, The Desert Spear, and uh, The Daylight War. They're all out from Del Rey. His uh, economical prose styling and his real focus on character was a huge inspiration to me. Uh, I love Mark Lawrence's Broken Empire trilogy, Prince of Thorns, King of Thorns, and Emperor of Thorns. His book, Prince of Fools, just came out a couple days ago. And if you read Breach Zone, my third novel, you'll see that it has a double helix narrative of a flashback and present time interweaving with each other. That is shamelessly stolen from, uh, from Mark Lawrence's second and third novels. I really love Joe Abercrombie. I really love China Mie. Uh, I really love Naomi Novik. You got to be careful with a question like this. I can keep you here all day long, uh, uh, telling you, uh, telling you about the influence. So, how has your life changed? You know, from your work with the military to turning into a published author. Um, you know, it's funny. Not a whole lot. I uh, originally it did because I was a full-time author for a while. Uh, but now that I'm working for a large metropolitan police department, and I'm still doing uh, commanding on the reserve side, uh, a Coast Guard squadron, uh, it hasn't changed a lot except for one tiny aspect, which is that I now work from the moment I open my eyes in the morning until the moment I close them at night seven days a week. All I do is work. I, that may sound pretty awful, but I actually count myself as very fortunate. I think most people have one job and they don't like very much. I have three that I can't believe I'm paid to do. So when you're writing, uh, you know, do you have a process or do you just sit down and kind of whatever 
comes out, you just Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, George, George R. R. Martin uh, famously said that there are gardeners and architects. Uh, I am the uber, uber architect. I have an extremely rigid quality control process. By the time I sit down and write one word of prose, I have usually a 100-page outline with every single element of the book stepped out. Uh, what's happening in each chapter, all of the story arcs laid out, and that uh, outline has been uh, beta read by people whose opinions I trust. This is because my biggest fear is that if, I, if I'm a gardener, as George R. R. Martin is, that I'll write, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 words or even a whole book and then be like, oh, this doesn't work. And that's, you know, look, it takes me a year or sometimes more to write a novel. I don't wanna, I don't wanna throw that away. If I'm, if I'm making really big mistakes, I wanna know about them early in the process. Um, you know, it's just a final piece. Any words of advice for anyone who, you know, is just starting out as a writer, anything like that? Yeah, lock it up. Uh, if there's one thing that really frustrates me about writers, beginning writers is I cannot stand writers who don't. Writing is work. It is merciless 24 by 7 work. It is homework every night for the rest of your life. If you're talking about writing, if you are, oh, I'm you know, going to get around to that novel someday. If you're not finishing novels, then you're not, you're not doing it right. Put your ass in a chair and, and, and get off the internet uh, and, and get your work done. That's Mike Cole uh, giving some words of wisdom to future authors. Be sure to pick up his books, check them out, they're really great. Again, thank you for being with us and talking with us today. Thanks for having me.